Hello luxury watch lovers! In this channel I cover the background, fundamental design features and things to consider before buying your watch. If you have a luxury watch that you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. In today's video, we're going to cover the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 150m. The Omega Aquaterra is a perfect all-rounder, sporty without being a monolithic tool watch, rugged enough for a game of football, European, not American, smart enough to wear to work and with an engine on board that outperforms most players on the field. The Seamaster is Omega's longest running product line, having debuted in 1948 to commemorate the company's 100th anniversary. The Seamaster, a civilian version of the popular wristwatches Omega had supplied to the British Air Force during World War II, was positioned as a resilient, water-resistant watch that could be worn in any situation rather than as a diver. The Seamaster has evolved into a plethora of subfamilies ranging from solid gold dress watches to monolithic steel monsters for exploring the abyss. The Omega Seamaster 300, released in 1957 alongside the Speedmaster and Railmaster hit trio, is one of the most well-known members of the Seamaster family. The Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 150m is arguably one of the better value all-round entry-level watches available on the market today, but it's also most likely flying completely under your radar. In the collection, since 2003, it received a subtle visual refresh last year along with an in-house movement in the form of the Master Chronometer Caliber 8900, striking the balance between everyday wear and an elegant dress watch. The Aquaterra is the perfect choice for those people looking for one watch for all occasions. The Aquaterra 150m is the most popular watch in the collection. These watches are available in a variety of dial, strap and material combinations. So there's a good chance that one of the references will speak to you. The first thing you'll notice about the Seamaster Aquaterra is how well it's finished. The case and bracelets combination of polished and brushed finishes reflect light beautifully. Along with the case finishing, you'll notice how well the dials are put together and how unique some of the colors are, such as the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Blue. Omega has discovered the ideal middle ground in terms of not only weight, but also size. It's not considered small, but it does appear slightly slimmer than it is. You should really hand it to Omega for engineering and designing a watch that can appeal to so many buyers and can be worn in many different settings. If you have a limited budget and don't have enough capital for multiple luxury watches, we advise that you evaluate the Omega Terra 150m to daily wear that can also hold its own in a formal setting. The Omega Aquaterra is a superb luxury Swiss-made timepiece. Omega only manufactures high-quality watches to the highest standards. The Omega Seamaster Aquaterra is frequently compared to the Rolex Datejust, and this comparison is entirely justified. These two collections compete in the same category and are priced very similarly, with the Rolex being slightly more expensive. It's only natural to compare the Aquaterra to the Datejust. They both are manufactured by two giants within the watch industry. They are simple three-hand date models, and they come in many different references. The ladies' Aquaterra is a solid woman's watch, and this beautiful Aquaterra is marketed as an entry-level model, offering a surprising amount of bang for your buck. 
Now, it may not have the same level of prestige as, say, a Rolex Date Just 41 in oyster steel, but it also costs roughly 30% less while providing many of the same benefits. Although it is a member of the Seamaster family, it is not a dive watch. Omega describes it instead as a sophisticated watch imbued with ocean spirit. In layman's terms, this means it's intended for the casual sailing enthusiast rather than the deep sea diver, an ethos that pervades the watch's design. Well-designed women's sports watches are few and far between. They either look like a smaller version of a men's watch or something that is too pink or has too many diamonds. However, the Lady Seamaster Aquaterra has been a hit with women because it's merged feminine elements into a true sports watch design. The range of the ladies' Aquaterras is just as vast as the men. If diamonds are your thing, Omega's got you covered. Let's take a look at some of the design features. In today's watch, we're looking at a case size of 41 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters. It has an in-house automatic master chronometer caliber 8900, which has a META certification. This allows up to 60 hours power reserve. The beautiful domed scratch-resistant sapphire crystal has an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. It is perfect for our aqua lovers with a water resistance of 150 meters. The steel bracelet with double folding clasp complements the watch quite nicely. Now you should brace yourself for the price because you're looking at about $5,700 for this gorgeous watch. Here are things to consider before buying the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra, starting with number one, the case. The Omega Seamaster Aquaterra comes in two case sizes, 38 millimeters and 41 millimeters. Today, we'll look at the latter, which is also the more popular of the two, although smaller case sizes are certainly on the rise. The previous version was larger at 41.5 millimeters, so the slight size reduction is greatly appreciated. And when it comes to wearing a watch every day, comfort is essential. The case is also now symmetrical, which seems strange to say, but in the previous model, the crown was partially absorbed by the case band on the right hand side. It's probably not something you would notice unless it was pointed out to you, but it does give the new Aquaterra a more balanced look on the wrist. The case is understated in appearance, with some subtle touches that make it a watch that can be dressed up or down. The polished bezel and outer flanks of the lugs contrast nicely with the brush surfaces. With just one look at the case, you can tell this isn't a dedicated tool watch. Nonetheless, it has a water resistance rating of 150 meters. In keeping with the watch's overall nautical theme, the case back has a wavy edge design. It fits comfortably on the wrist and goes well with a suit and tie or jeans and sneakers. Moving on to number two, the dial. The Omega Seamaster Aquaterra's dial is probably its most distinctive feature. With a horizontal teak pattern inspired by the wooden decks of luxury sailboats, the effect on the black dial model that we're looking at here is subtler than on some of the other dial colors available, but it still adds a unique element to the design that makes it instantly recognizable on the wrist. Again, this is an improvement over the previous model, which had vertical lines. I'm sure I'm not alone in preferring the horizontal design. It's less pronounced than the previous version and in my opinion looks much better. Furthermore, it better conveys the nautical theme. However, this is not the only change that Omega has made to the dial. The date window has been moved from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, which is a welcome change. The wording, water resistance, has also been removed from the dial and is now engraved on the case back. 
Both changes are minor, but they do have a significant impact on the dial's overall appeal. It appears more balanced and symmetrical now, which corresponds to the case's symmetry. The time display is completed by rhodium-plated broad arrow hands and indices filled with white superluminova, which adds a touch of sportiness to the dial. Again, it has all of the necessary features for sport to use, but nothing extreme, so it can fly under the radar. Ticking away with number three, the movement. When it comes to value for money, the Aquaterra shines here. A sapphire case back reveals the inner workings of the Omega Master Chronometer Caliber 8900 when the watch is turned over. And if you're not familiar with Omega's Master Chronometer certification, stay tuned. Omega set out with the Master Chronometer program to create the highest quality, most reliable movements possible, regardless of the environment in which they must operate. Aside from the stop seconds function, which allows you to set the time to the exact second, there is a handy time zone function that allows you to set the hour hand independently. The Caliber 8900 is a chronometer certified automatic movement. It features two barrels, which combine to offer a total power reserve of 60 hours. It uses silicon parts for the entire regulating organ and is capable of resisting magnetic fields up to 15,000 gausses. The arabesque decoration and diamond cut bevels are simple yet attractive and can be appreciated through the case back. And last but not least, number four, the bracelet. Another good design upgrade of the 2017 models is how the bracelet is integrated into the case which improves the aesthetics and fit. Regarding style, Omega's three-link bracelet is similar to the Oyster bracelet, and thanks to the bracelet's mobile end links, those closest to the case, it fits snugly on an average size wrist with no signs of overlap. The bracelet's open gaps allow more air to circulate, which is a big plus in hot weather. The case back has an ornamental wave design and allows you to see the automatic Calibre 8900 that powers this three-hander and date. This model has a polished and brushed steel bracelet with a double fold-over clasp. Omega claims that the integration of the case and the bracelet on this latest version of the Aquaterra has definitely been improved, allowing it to sit flatter and more comfortably on your wrist. To give the appearance of a fully integrated bracelet, the rubber strap version has an extra bar between the lugs. Omega also offers 40 different strap versions, ranging from leather to NATO, allowing you to easily tailor this model to your preferences. If you're looking for the best place to get this watch, I have linked it below. This wraps up my review of the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 150 meters. So let me know in the comments what's on your wrist today. Thank you for sticking it out to the very end of this video. Nothing helps my channel more than you watching until the very end. If you enjoy this type of content, let me know in the comments below what other watches you think deserve their own video. And remember, time is your greatest asset.